hello guys welcome back to the channel and today's unit is 10 and this unit has lots of name there in one book it's different and in another book this chapter has different names for example assessment and management of high risk newborn in one book and in another book if you see NICU admissions so generally in this chapter you'll get to know after the birth what are the risk factors or what are the complications that is seen in the baby and that is leading to NICU admissions that is you are seeing in this chapter and from this chapter you will get one question for 5 marks one question for 2 marks so totally 7 marks if you read this chapter you are perfect with 7 marks NICU or neonatal intensive care unit soon after the birth if the baby has any kind of complications or any kind of disease or any kind of illness and it requires special care so NICU is set this is a special unit where they will provide care for the baby's illness and the main aim of this neonatal care unit is to reduce the disease and the death rate of the baby and what are the frequent cases that gets admitted in the NICU are the low birth baby that is premature baby and if the baby has large weight if the baby is very big and if the baby has any breathing problem or if the baby has any uh, urinary tract infections mainly jaundice is largely seen cases these are the cases that get admitted in the NICU nursing care in NICU we need to change the tubes regularly and cleaning the area should be maintained and from one baby to another baby there should be a separate articles there should not be any common articles and we should maintain our hand hygiene and we need we need to wear gloves safety measures should be followed strictly and minimize the use of catheter should be done uh, sterile fluid administration should be done in a sterile way and uh, we should promote the eternal feeding that is uh, avoid the bottle feeding and we need to keep on checking that is there any nosocomial infection that is affecting the baby or not nosocomial infection that is hospitalized infection and waste discharge should be done properly there should not be any accumulation of waste and mainly the blood or the waste that is present in the cottons everything should be discarded these are the nursing care of the nicus next topic that we are going to deal is preterm labor and uh, preterm labor is already i mean explained it in the unit 8 part c if you want in detail you can go and visit there but one thing the complications i didn't miss that one so here if the baby is born before the full term what are the complications first it will affect the brain and the heart that's the main the brain will not get fully developed so there will be a disorders like uh, no coordination uh, no proper growth there is no proper posters uh, there will be a problem in walking delay in walking these are the problems that is seen regarding the brain while vision the eyes is also not properly developed so there will be a vision problem hearing problem will be seen and apart from this heart in heart there are lots of defects in very small age the uh, baby might get asthma breathing disorders and heart disorder holes in heart or a heart destructure this can be seen in this condition these are the complications that is seen in premature babies physiological jaundice or neonatal jaundice this is one of the common condition in which the baby gets admitted to NICU and almost 50% of babies get this jaundice. Here the baby's skin almost turn yellow and here the serum bilirubin level will be less than 5 mg by dl. And the cause is generally the external factor. Before birth the baby stays inside the womb it will be very secure while get exposed to the outer environment the baby gets jaundice. So if the mother and baby has different blood groups and the drug vitamin k can cause jaundice and the sudden fall of temperature sudden fall of glucose in the blood infection breathing problem and suddenly there is a bilirubin level more in the blood this causes physiological jaundice management is very simple we will first assist how much level the bilirubin is present in the baby's body and we will do physical assessment like uh, what is the skin color eye color and uh, where are the yellow discoloration is more we will check like that and then the treatment is very basic breastfeeding phototherapy and sunlight 
it's enough and the baby will get cured if there is any other complications coming we will recommend pediatrician care for baby under phototherapy what is the nursing role in this condition see in less frequency of light the baby will be placed in naked and one thing the baby should not exposed to the light for long period of time but mainly in high frequency of light the baby's eyes and genital part should be covered because it will damage the parts and the baby should not be exposed to radiation that is too hot should not be placed and even the baby should not be kept too cold area the baby should be placed alternatively in regular re frequency of time and because of placing the baby in the heat thermal temperature the body fluids will evaporate so extra fluid should be provided and kangaroo mother care should be provided mother should touch the baby mother should talk with the baby so interaction will actually heal the baby faster and next regular feeding should be done by which the jaundice can get cured fastly birth aspexia which is also known as aspexia neonatorum and it is a condition which occurs after the birth after the birth if the baby is not able to breathe properly the baby is struggling to breathe properly that condition is known as birth aspexia and if you see when the baby is present inside the womb at that time the baby doesn't breathe the lungs will not be in the working condition the baby will be surviving with the support of mother but after the birth the baby needs to breathe on its own but due to some condition there will be a struggle or the baby is not able to breathe properly this condition is birth aspexia if there is any problem in blood supply or oxygen is not reaching the parts this is first stage of uh, birth aspexia and if there is already an injury because of this birth aspexia that is the second stage sign and symptoms the breathing pattern is very irregular the breathing will be very short and very deep and very quickly and where you see after sometimes the baby loses its consciousness and there will be a discoloration in the face lips extremities and all this is the sign and symptoms of birth aspexia treatment for the neonatal aspexia first if there is any risk factor that is interfering in the delivery process we need to take measures for it and we should avoid the delivery process which is causing injury for the fetus as well as the mother and after the birth if there is any kind of uh, complications or any problem to the baby or the mother we need to provide as soon as possible the care for the mother or the baby so before itself we need to prepare the things which are required that is resuscitation like uh, oxygen mask fluids medications everything should be pre prepared when it come to main management after the birth if the baby has any kind of problem mainly the breathing disorder the baby will be placed in the nicu and then the treatment will be further proceeded and this treatment includes the respiratory therapy circulatory therapy and then do remember if the baby is not able to breathe properly at that time the toxic substances which is present inside the body will not get excreted and because of that there will be acid base differences to maintain that we need to provide medications and then if there is no proper oxygen supply to all the parts then suddenly there might be a injury because the baby is just born it's very delicate and the system the organs present inside it is also very delicate when there is no proper oxygen supply the injury for the organs will be very quick so we need to find if there is any other complications because of this condition and then we need to treat it also and then generally in many babies seizures occurs because of this condition so if you see any symptoms related seizures we need to give treatment as a precautionary measures these are the management of the neonatal aspexia intrauterine growth restriction which is also known as fetal growth restriction by the name itself you'll get to know there is a problem regarding the fetal growth it is in the intrauterine in the condition that's inside the womb when the baby present inside the womb there is some kind of factors it might be either external or internal this factors actually interfering the growth of the baby and the baby is not able to grow to the normal level this is a condition where baby doesn't grow to normal weight during the pregnancy that is iugr intrauterine growth restriction and if you see the causes are very simple first of all the environment 
that's the main thing if the environment is very unhealthy then definitely it will affect the growth of the baby when it come to internal factors the placental abnormalities or any kind of amniotic abnormalities if there is polyamnuria oligoamnuria this condition can affects the baby growth if the mother has any kind of underlying disease and infections can affect the fetus growth if you see the causes in detail the maternal factors are the age of the mother and uh, the small status and uh, high attitude in the sense uh, the height of the mother if the mother is very short then the growth place for the baby is also very small so the baby is not able to grow properly any genetic factors stress underlying disease condition if the baby is under nutrition if the mother has any bad habits like alcohol and drugs or if the mother is living in the unhealthy environment can cause iugr placental conditions placental conditions there are lots of placental condition cord prolapse uh, placenta abnormalities placenta tumor placenta previa placenta brachia saturata placenta and uh, many more if there is any problem related to the placenta then that will definitely affect the growth of the baby or else if fetal itself have any kind of disorder due to any kind of genetic condition or hereditary condition if the fetal has like uh, trisome 21 trisome 18 trisome 13 tumor syndrome or any kind of congenital disorders can really affect the growth of the baby these are the causes preventive measures of iugr first primary preventive measures we will avoid the unhealthy environment healthier the environment healthier the baby and we will provide a good diet for the mother and then we will advise the mother to come for routine checkups on routine checkups we will get to know whether the baby is growing good or is there any abnormalities present in it and at that time we will provide counseling vaccinations to prevent the multi gestation we will try to prevent the multi gestation because it's a main cause for growth restriction and is there any complications leading because of iugr we will try to correct it also next the secondary preventive measures in first preventive measures we will try to prevent we will try to avoid the problem before it comes but in secondary level we will try to cure the problem if there is any kind of risk is detected we will try to cure here first we need to detect what's the problem and then we will treat here and to see the progress we will keep on Uh, screening the mother will keep on taking the measures of the mother this is secondary preventive measure of iugr let's see the feeding problems and uh, if you want to know more about the breastfeeding i have been already explained it in the unit 6 part d video if you want in detail you can visit there now the problems during the feeding first sore nipple this is commonly seen in the mother which is a dry nipple baby doesn't suck the ni dry nipple before feeding the baby you need to moist the area so if you want to come over this condition you need to clean the area regularly after feeding and you need to change the positions like for few seconds on the right and the for next minute on the left by doing this condition you can avoid the dryness of the next side next infection and the painful lumps see even you are following the hygiene protocols even you are feeding the baby on the regular interval at some extent the breast infection will occur which is known as mastitis if it is just a pain you can follow the hot compression the hot water towel by that you'll get the relief but if it is not just a pain it's an infection then you need to visit the doctor next inadequate supply of milk okay it's a very very common thing which is seen in nowadays that is uh, the milk supply is not enough for the baby to overcome this we generally advise the mother to do yoga and some kind of massage around the breast and uh, eat the diet food which produces lots of milk and next inverted nipple yeah here the tip of the nipple is actually inside generally while feeding the nipple has to come out but at some conditions at some complications or infections it doesn't come out this is inverted nipple at this condition you need to visit the doctor apart from this cases there is one more another uh, feeding problem that is uh, overfilling of the breast if the mother is not feeding the baby on correct interval on correct time there will be overfilling of the breast 
and even sometimes even the mother is feeding the baby on time but still the mother's breast might be overfilled with milk this condition can actually lead to breast engorgement which is a very worse condition in which the mother feels pain tightening of the breast there will be swelling of the breast to cure breast engorgement you need to go to hospital if you want to get rid of this overfilling of the milk in your breast you need to express the milk on your own these are the feeding problems infection site in neonate babies in eyes ophthalmia neonatorum infection in skin in umbilicus in oral cavity oral trach is a common condition respiratory tract infection in blood septicemia means sepsis the infection of the blood in cranial system we have meningitis and ivh condition and intra abdominal infection now let's see everything in a brief manner first ophthalmia neonatorum this is the infection and inflammation of the conjunctiva the eye part and this occurs in the first 3 weeks after the birth it is caused by the chlamydia trichomatis and apart from this even because of bacteria like staphylococcus pseudomonal pneumococcal and chemicals like silver nitrate overuse of this silver nitrate can cause if it is used in a normal level no need to worry it will not lead to infection or inflammation and virus like heparis virus uh, that is type 2 because of this the ophthalmia neonatorum is caused at the time of delivery because of the vaginal discharge the baby might get this condition so soon after the birth we need to clean the baby well and one thing at the time of birth the baby will be closing its eyelid so we need to clean it thoroughly even it is closing its eyes and if we follow a aseptic manner of delivery process that is if we follow the high level of hygiene level in the delivery process this condition can be eliminated to cure this we use a solution known as tetracycline or soframycin or 1% silver nitrate eye drops by using this within few weeks or within few days the baby gets cured from this condition skin infection in skin infection the common condition is pimpicus neonatorum this is nothing but uh, acne like thing a small spore like things will occur in the skin in the reddish color and it is caused by an uh, bacteria known as staphylococcus aureus next umbilicus sepsis this is infection and inflammation in the umbilical region and uh, the bacteria that causes this condition is staphylococcus e coli tetany this all causes this condition and because of this condition there will be a discharge in the umbilicus and uh, this condition even delays the fall of the cord from the umbilical next oral trach and this is a condition where there will be a fungal growth in the oral cavity in the buccal region and around the trunk there will be a fungal growth by the candida albicans and this fungal growth will form a milky curd like texture in the mouth if you try to wipe it will not come out that is oral trach sepsis this is the infection of the blood and this condition is so threatening that it can take the life of the baby it can occur because of bacteria or virus but generally it occurs because of the drug uses if mother is using lot of drug or there is a lot of drug or chemical exposed to the baby then automatically the baby gets this condition and those chemicals which are released in the baby's body will start to spread but baby's body stop, try to stop it by producing antibiotics but still baby's body the organs present inside it is so delicate that it can't win those chemicals the chemicals start to damage those organs by damaging those organs it leads to the death of the baby this is sepsis meningitis meninges is a fluid that is present in the brain and the spinal cord if there is any infection occurring to that fluid that is known as meningitis so in commonly meningitis is an infection and inflammation for the brain and the spinal cord membranes and it can be caused because of bacteria and fungus but generally it is caused because of viral infection there is a vaccine for it by taking the vaccine we can prevent this meningitis ivh intraventricular hemorrhage it is a condition where the bleeding is seen in the cranial region it is also known as uh, intracranial bleeding and this condition is seen because of any problem in the delivery section if they use any forceps delivery and the baby's head is injured or in the delivery process if fetus has any distress because of this this condition the ivh occurs 
and uh, when this condition occurs the baby will get respiratory problems too so as a management we will first support the respiratory system and then circulatory system if there is a problem in the respiratory system then automatically there will be a acid base disturbance for that correction we will provide the medications and uh, this medications this supply everything will be provided to the baby in the nicu that is a special unit where the baby will be given care and one thing this condition will not cause the permanent damage in the brain it will can it can be cured but but if it's very 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 serious then it can even lead to death or permanent neurological disorder the baby can't walk or some kind of problems this is ivh next intra abdominal infection this is the infection in the gi system and one thing it is caused because of uh, microorganisms if you are not taking care of this condition it can spread from one part to the other part of the gi system respiratory problems apnea meconium aspiration atelesis idiopathic respiratory distress syndrome bronchopulmonary dysphagia these are the conditions while apnea is nothing but the absence of breathing or a cessation of respiration that is nothing but if you see if a baby is crying for a long time and suddenly there will be a pull of respiration that is apnea uh, that is how the apnea is seen uh, this apnea will be most frequently seen in the babies and uh, gradually the time the length of the apnea will be increased first for 10 seconds and then gradually for 20 seconds and even more longer if the condition is getting worse then automatically there will be a symptoms like color will be changing in the baby's body like bluish discoloration and a bradycardia will be seen very often that is apnea and we have meconium aspiration when the baby is inside the womb at the time of birth in in this time the baby might intake the meconium generally in 5 to 10 percentage of birth this condition is seen that is meconium aspiration it can be seen either in the full term baby or pre term baby atelectasis this is a condition where the lungs is collapsed either partially or fully the collapsed lungs is actually filled with the fluid in this condition if the child is not treated properly the treatment is not given properly it may lead to death and next bronchopulmonary dysplasia in this condition it is a chronic pulmonary disorder it which means the lungs is filled with fluid and this fluid which is filled in the lungs leads to edemas and this condition can be treated with oxygen therapy idiopathic respiratory distress in this the child is suffering from respiratory disorder but the reason the exact reason is not known generally in premature babies it is seen or the babies whose mother has diabetes or the baby who has been born through c sections in this babies this condition is seen and this condition last for 3 to 5 days these are the respiratory problems This are the possible question from this chapter meet you in the next video until then stay tuned bye